You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That was the Strokes, Reptilia, and then we had the Pretenders, Mystery Achievement. And, to, and it is uh, 13 minutes after 12 bells on a Tuesday. It's beautiful out. I rode in on my bike, and it's all good stuff. My guest today is Mike Tramp of White Lion. How are you? It's great to be here, Jonesy. Great to be here. Great to see you after almost... 23 years. At least, right? Yeah, and you look the same. Yeah, a little bit heavier. Yeah. A few more wrinkles. Yeah, but still the same. Few... I look at the heart. Yeah. <laughs> what you been up to, man? It's What you been up to 23 years ago? Yeah. White Lion ended how long after back in the in 91. day? 91. 91, and shortly after I had another band called Freak of Nature took it over to Europe. Played the underground, you know, nobody in L.A. wanted to touch anybody who had been part of the 80s. Yeah. I remember calling all the record companies and saying, hey, you know, I got a brand new band. We sound a little bit like ACDC meets Pearl Jam. Uh, and I was in White Lion. And they hung up. They, that magic word, White Lion. They just hung up. So I said, man, I got to get back over to London. And we went over and, and it just toured in the U.K. And, and everybody accepted it for the music. But yeah. then after a few years... 90, 96, I went solo, and now 11 solo albums later. But did you move back to Denmark? I first moved. <laughs> I sat with my wife at that time. We had moved up to Lake Tahoe as, as starting a new new, new way. You're not married anymore? No. I remember and, that and lady. I, yeah, yeah, Fleur. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were good friends with the, all together. And we moved up there, and we, you know, suddenly she said, you know, maybe we should just try it. A whole new place and you know she was originally from australia and she said my sister says we can live at her farm in tasmania uh, for most american who don't know what tasmania is you know a that's lot of the last, there. exactly it's the last island on earth before you step into the south pole you can't get any further away from any exactly anything. no and and so we arrived there at the end of 99 saying, okay, a brand new beginning. <laughs> Nobody cares about the car we drive. Nobody cares about anything because we'd really hit, we hit rock bottom right before we, uh, we left, you know. And um, we're really enjoying it for a while. And then, but then suddenly one day I wake up and I say, what hey, am I doing? you know, I, I play rock and roll. There's no place to play in the, on this island. There's not even a studio. There's nothing. And then bit by bit, I started venturing back into the world. Um, I was once part of. So how long did you live in Tasmania for? We lived in Tasmania for three years, and then uh, so we, bro we broke up. In, in, in Tasmania? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what, I, I do that to as, you, yeah, in they, relationships. <laughs> well, it didn't help that, that, you know, somebody had waved some big money in front of my face uh, to play in Indonesia as White Lion, which had already had broken up 10 years prior to that. And uh, so I, I go over to Indonesia with three Australians playing five massive stadiums. Oh, it wasn't the original band. No, of course it does. Nothing is original anymore. But you you own the name? Yeah, no, I didn't own the name. But but it was in Indonesia. <laughs> it was in Indonesia. You know, it's so you say it's in Indonesia, and 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 I came over there and discovered that the band were bigger than almost anything over there. We have like the three biggest ballads, and still to this day. And then on the last day of the tour, I meet my new wife. And she Indonesian? Yeah, she's Indonesian. And then, you know, the last the last 14 years have just been one roller coaster after another. Yeah? Yeah. It, it's still very positive, and I got two beautiful children. But the thing is, like, I'm too Western to really be wanting to live there. Too Where, long Indonesia? Out of time. In, in Jakarta, Indonesia, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. yeah. So the traffic is a little heavy. <laughs> they, they, they have no rules on the road. No, they, no, there's no rules. No, I wouldn't want to be on a motorcycle. No, right no, there. there's only motorcycles. Oh, they're just smaller, but they're just as fast. Yeah. It's just the way it is. So, so you know, but... Were I, you there when they had that, that tsunami? I've been there every time there's been an earthquake tsunami. and a tsunami. Yeah, at Bali, yeah. Uh, you know, and the previous ones, too, yeah. But we're in Jakarta. Java usually does not get hit, but you know, it's 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 just a whole different world. So you 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 you're with your missus from Indonesia in Denmark now. No, she's in Indonesia. I'm in Denmark. Oh, you left her? No, I'm just on the road constantly. 
But where do you live? <laughs> yeah, I don't live. I, you, Phil Lynott said this, okay. and you love Phil Lynott. Yeah. He said, you know, home is where my heart is. Okay. But my heart is not at home. All right. <laughs> a, I use the same thing with the pillow. <laughs> Wherever there's a pillow. The thing is that over the last 14 years, I've been basically traveling the world with the acoustic guitar. Yeah. And, and, and playing a bit of the old stuff, because uh, you always have to do that. Obviously playing a lot of the new stuff. But because I am my own manager, at times my own record company, my own t-shirt shop, I just basically go where there's a place to play or a tour or a work. And it gives me a lot of freedom in, in, in that way. Um, I would like to retire but I just don't have anything to retire on right now. So, um, and I still have a lot, lot of songs to to play. I still think I can, I can, I can sing well enough to to entertain people. And uh, you know, here now, um, for the last six years, I've been playing. You know, a three months tour every year in the U.S. Driving a rental car, it's. It, Almost similar to somebody I coming around every year selling a new version of, of the same vacuum cleaner. I, I just change the stores, you know, and maybe the haircut, you know, and the fans are there, and they're as as old as I am. So so we can share some 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 better kind of stories, and I, I really enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got a nice leather jacket on. Yeah, well, leather is 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 the ticket. I wish they made also underwear in that way, but well, like, but they do. I know a place. On, yeah, on I know. Santa Monica Boulevard. Yeah, but that comes with that know. comes with another package. <laughs> <laughs> as a different club, they don't like acoustic music there. Across the street from the Palmer, uh, uh, um, <laughs> I know. What's the place? The the, the car like, wash. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Six, Santa five, Monica five. Boulevard. There's a place in is, there. Is that what that Cheryl Crow song is about? Santa Monica Boulevard. Is that something else? I have no idea. Oh, I no idea. I never even listened to the bleeding lyrics to that song. Yeah, but but it's it's about having a lot of fun driving down Santa Monica Boulevard. It's also one. There's an there's an interesting story about that that part which was from 1981 when I was living in Spain the year before I came to America. And Van Halen, the great Van Halen, yeah. on their fourth album, yeah. uh, Fair Warning, comes to Spain. And um, I'm, on, I'm actually on the same record company as in my Danish band who lives in Spain. We're in the same Warner Brothers in, 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 uh, in, in Madrid. So I says, can I go meet the band? And says, you know what? You go with four limousines to Madrid International Airport and you pick the band up. You speak a little bit of Spanish oh. here and there. So I go there. I'm I'm only 20 years old. Yeah. And and I got a leather jacket on and a Van Halen t-shirt and my hair has just reached the shoulders. Yeah, yeah. I'm already preparing to be the next David Lee Roth. Yeah. But now I'm meeting the and and I'm standing there, it's like like five thousand, you know, Spanish people in the airport, and the first guy that comes out through customs is David Lee Roth. Yeah. And he must have been 2,000 feet tall. Yeah. And his hair is blonde and he got these sunglasses on that just makes him look really mean. Yeah. And he looks around and he goes, there must be something about this guy that stands there. He doesn't fit in with the rest. And he comes out to me and he says, who are you? And I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. you got to join. <laughs> and for the next three days, I was the only person taking Van Halen around to radio stations and all these different things. So I got really close yeah. to the band because they didn't have fans hanging out of the hotel. So I had just finished a new album with my band. We were called Stuts. Studs? Yeah, I, yeah the, the Stuts. Because Stuts. I, Stuts, S-T-U-D-S. But it, it, was, it was from, I've been reading all the new Musical Express and Melody Maker about all the new wave of British heavy metal and all the kids' yeah. leather jackets are studded and full of stuff. So I said, this is a great name. And I sat up one night and I drew these two studs like a German hand grenades. Yeah. I said, this is badass metal cover. <laughs> And then I'm 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 in the David Lee Roth hotel room. I'm probably the only guy who's been there, and yeah. and you know, and he's he's got his big you know ghetto blaster there. And I think we we're gonna sit and listen to ACDC, and then he puts on seventy disco music, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, this is my rock and roll hero. Yeah. What's going on here? And then when the moment comes, I says, David, I also have a band, 
And the, my plan is that the second I gave him the album, he says, you're the opening act yeah. on the next Van Halen tour. Yeah, I bet it didn't go that way. Okay, no, of course not. So he <laughs> picks up the album cover, and he sits there for a while, and he goes, Stutz, this ain't going to work in the States. They'll think you're the new village people. <laughs> and I sat there, what does he mean by that? And it wasn't until I got back to the other guys in the band, he says, this name gonna not gonna work. So we flew to America half a year later. On the way over, I was running around to every American trying to come with, up with new names. And when we arrived in New York in the summer of 82, we were called Lion. Yeah. And, and, and did you have a record deal at that point? No, we we just ended up. You just uh, called yourself Lion. We call Lion, and we were just playing some clubs in New York. This was just when, of course, MTV David Letterman yeah. had just started and stuff yeah. like that. And every club was open for another band that had you know long blonde hair and stuff like that. But at the end of that year, is when I meet Vito Brada, the guitar player, White Lion. Yeah, yeah. And people started saying this is when every band was being molded around Van Halen. Yeah, the blonde yeah. lead singer. And a yeah, guitar yeah. player with a Strad and a Floyd Rose. It's obvious when you look at your videos. It's yeah, totally, it's, it's, it's just obvious. It's another you know, form and of then, a... You know, and I went back to Denmark with the guys. They had given up, and I said, I got a, I got a bank loan. The only bank loan I've ever got in my career for, for, for a $500 one-way flight ticket back to New York. A bank loan? Yeah, like a bank loan, you know. And my mom went with me. What's and a bank loan? Yeah, exactly. It's a, you know, like a loan from a bank. Oh, a bank loan. Yeah. I'm, I'm like a banglo. Is that some kind of a lie? Yeah, you forgot the end. <laughs> you did. <laughs> should we play some music? What should we play? I wonder. Wait, Wait coming in. Let's oh. have it. We're here with uh, Mike Tramp. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox, Calloway. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on Calloway. That was Van Halen, Unchained, and before that was White Lion, Wait. And my guest is Mike Tramp of White Lion in here right now. What, what do you think about them two songs back to back? I think it's great. I mean, there wouldn't have been White Lion without Van Halen. I mean, I'm also the first one to say that even though I molded myself after, of course, I'd grown up in Denmark, molding myself around Bowie and, and, and Freddie Mercury and, and always understood the facts that when you are on stage... You perform. Yeah. I mean, I'd also grown up with my brother watching and, and listening to Led Zeppelin and Ian Gill and stuff like that and Ozzy. And, you know, they were just like statues in the middle of the stage. So once Mercury hit the stage and, you know, it was like, okay, you can't, you know. And then when I saw Roth and I said, man, this is the way a singer should be, you know. That's what I want to do. Exactly. You know, and so everything, you know, we you, we used the template of it. But obviously, you know, the songwriting of White Lion and, and, and my lyrics has nothing to do with it, you know. So we never really felt that we were just something following and, and just like that. But there was, is a similarity, though. There's the guitar a similar. player is very similar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody using a Strat with a Floyd Rose back then and things like that. But, you know, interesting enough, since you're on that issue, a lot, when I have wanting to redo a couple of, like, maybe wide lion ideas, and I've called some of my friends in L.A. and stuff like that, some of the f more flashy guitar players, none of the guitar players wanted to touch Vito solos. Vito solos are not made around blues or, or a clap nor anything like that. Vito is, is a piece of music that you cannot step out of once you start that solo. It's kind of like one, once you enter, you can only come out of it if you finish the solo. And that's where he was a, a very unique. He was kind of a virtuoso in, in that field. Yeah. Do you, what, what's happened to him? Well, Vito stopped the day White Lion stopped. He's not interested in No, he him. really turned his back to the music business. I talk, we, we're very good friends. Okay. And, and we had, we of course, we had the usual... Uh, lawsuits going on when I, I was like lured into to going the easy way and doing some white line stuff and, and, and using the name and things like that. We settled that down and, and, and now I wouldn't touch white line or anything. Vito and I have made a promise that none of us will, we want the memory of the original band um, 
So, be as it is. So no more shows in Indonesia as White Lion. Well, well, they they put That's it different, on. The, though. That's Indonesia. It, no Indonesia. I know. I don't <laughs> want to do it. I don't want to do it. You know. But but sometimes they they get confused when they print up the posters. Yeah. They, you know. Also when when I do because you know I'm I'm, I'm I'm as well known in Indonesia on, as my tram. But one of the last posters said Mike Trump. Trump. Yeah. And and you know my wife sent me this that my 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 kid was getting a merit in school next week and it says Lennon Trump. They just think that it it's they just think that we're related somehow. Yeah, you. Yeah. It's, it's a it's a it's a knockoff of Trump. Yeah, exactly. Trump. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we was talking about um, the Van Halen thing. Yeah, yeah. Ed, yeah. Then, yeah, uh, it, it. I felt I felt fortunate because obviously I I, I followed the band to 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 the end of, of the earth, and I have my my different opinion about all, all the slandering and back and forth and stuff like that. But in those years, when it was the Roth years and it was it was the mighty Van Halen, uh, I was just very fortunate to get this close. And one night in Madrid, you know, the record company showing up and they want to take them out for big Spanish paella. This is when you're hanging about. Well. They, hanging about, just, you know, a 20-year-old kid, you know, with Van Halen t-shirt and leather jacket, you know. And Roth says, I don't want to eat that Spanish food, man. Take me to McDonald's. So, you know, the road manager or their manager, Noel Monk, says, can you take him to a McDonald's? Says, can I take him to a McDonald's? Bet you I can. So we go to McDonald's, one of the big McDonald's, and I'm sitting there, and, and he says, man, just give me like four cheeseburgers. And I says, why? He doesn't want Big Mac? You know? <laughs> and we're sitting there eating, and, and I can see in the corner these four little Spanish girls looking at me. I was very popular there, so you know, with they the knew teens. Who you were. With, they knew who you were. And they come up there and says, you know, like, what? Autograph, you know? And I sign it, and but I feel really, really bad. Because he's says, sitting I'm there, sitting here and next no one knows to, who he is. to my God. Yeah, he is my God. Yeah. So I say to him, I say to them, man, you need to get his autograph too. And 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 they say, Ken S, Ken S, who is this? Hmm. I says, you know, muy famoso in Estados Unidos, very famous in 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 the states. So they get his name, and you know, he's s s trying to swallow this. Yeah. And I remember he's probably the, not liking it. No, no, but but you know, classic Roth on the way home. He's explaining this story about a Ferrari for two hours that I still don't understand, and I've never really understood any of the conversations we had. He was like, I, but I just went along because he was my hero. Yeah. And then many years later, after White Lion succeeds and stuff like that, he ends up doing one of these kind of like Las Vegas shows up in Lake Tahoe where I was living. And I went there together with Fleur, my wife at that moment, who also happens to be the one making David Lee Roth close on the first to have the famous red and white pants. Yeah, yeah. The, stripe. the legendary for a true Van Halen fan would know these things. So, and, and David even dated her. So we are the only two people backstage. It's unheard. Two people backstage for David Roth. Nobody else. In Tahoe. In Tahoe yeah. at the casino. What only year us. was this? This is 1997, okay. 1998. And okay. he's doing, you know, he's got short hair and stuff like that. And he's got his security guard, Eddie Anderson, with him. But he's treating us two like we're... we're 200 people, Eddie get them drinks and stuff like that. He's not acknowledging that this actually happens to be Mike Tram, the singer from White Line. He should know who I was. It doesn't matter. And this is actually the girl that, you know, what had his, his her hands off his butt measuring, her, you know, the, for the pants and that he actually dated for a while. We're like two strangers. Yeah. And I'm just I'm wondering, <laughs> how are you able to to run that kind of show because I remember the taxi drive from, from 10 yeah, years ago. Yeah, yeah. I remember anybody, I remember the girl at the post office. Yeah. I have a problem with that, you know, so I was trying to make nice with everybody. Yeah. So, but he's just, it's just looking at us like, like we just came in from, you know, we just won a contest to, to meet him back. Really? It's, it's just, it's hilarious. That's, that is hilarious. It is hilarious. But you think he did know you was? I don't know from I've, I've followed a lot of the stuff that Roth does and you know his, his, his YouTube clips and stuff like that. I don't know what planet he's in sometimes yeah so uh, 
It yeah. would be a very, he, you know, to play that role of ignoring it. I mean, it would be cool. Ah, yeah, no, Fleur, I remember you, man. All those pants you made, those were really cool and stuff. I mean, you know, like like you and I, we talk about the old days. If I go, Steve, remember every Sunday when we used to play soccer? Yeah. With all the other Europeans that didn't have no other place to go, and we met there. And that's why I was asking Did we? you. Yeah. Was that you? That was me, yeah. I'm kidding. And that's why I was asking you about the the Arsenal shirt, because there would always be somebody that would be fighting over nobody. And I know how strong you are being a Brit. Yeah. That you don't want to carry or wear another jersey. But you were the one owning all the jerseys for all the teams. So we would wear. And I'm an Arsenal fan, and you're a Chelsea fan, which means that's a local derby. And, and so and so. You were you were you were a decent football player. Yeah, it was great. I, it, it was the happiest moment. You know, one of the things that I realized there is it was an opening where I started seeing that there was something in L.A. and rock and roll were not given me. I came from Denmark. Yeah. I came from a neighborhood. I came from a friend, a circle of friends that was so important. I knew millions of people in L.A., but nobody ever wanted to do something. You only just met them backstage, yeah. and they were never real. It was it was normal playing football. Yeah, but, but, a... but you, the crew you had gathered there of... of, of Actors, that were, I, I remember there was an Argentinian actor, great player, and, and stuff like that. And everybody got together. Remember Millie Vanilli? Yeah, I didn't play. Uh, were they there once? They used, they used to play. A okay, lot. yeah, I, I, I never played with them. The one the one who died, he was a decent footballer. Okay, yeah. Because they were from Germany, really. Yeah, well, there right? you go. Yeah. There you go. He was a good, he was a good footballer. Um, it was yeah. funny because I mean, you know I remember seeing Ozzy Osbourne jogging around. The, right. You know, was, he, he came down. Yeah. He says, "Man, wow, he's getting ready for a tour." Yeah. yeah, those were good times. Yeah, it was a good time. Those were good times. Do you play football anymore? Made it real? Not really. I, yeah. I, the knees. My knees. knees. My knees. The, the knees. I know. La- last time I played was actually when I was living on Lake Tahoe, and they started an indoor league, but they made it co-ed. And I've always been an extreme chauvinist from my dad's side that yeah. I really do not like to play with women in yeah. anything. Yeah. Oh, maybe just one thing, but besides that. <laughs> and then the fir- just within the first five minutes on the field, they run rings. This you. girl yeah. tries to not tackle because you don't tackle an indoor, but you just uh, ends up breaking my big toe. Yeah. And I just went home and I was just beyond anger. I just, oh, <sighs> oh no. I know. So you do you still follow Arsenal? Yeah, I live I live uh, part time with my brother in his house. He's a Man United supporter. He yeah. he has the Man United fan club in Denmark. But he's it's unbearable being in the house when the game is on. I if Arsenal plays Man United, I will, I I just say I hope Man United wins. It doesn't really matter. I'm not that diehard in that way. I think that if, I, if the team that plays the best should win. Yeah. But football today, or as they call it, soccer, has become something completely different. And, you know, I, I don't even know the names of the players, and I can't pronounce the names of the players anymore. Yeah. They come from different parts of the world. Yeah. I, I grew up when 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 it was Gordon Banks and Charlie George. You know what? That's when you were young. He just died today, Gordon Banks. Oh. He was 80-something. Oh, boy. 80 oh, boy. The best goalie. Yeah. Oh, National right. goalie. He, yeah, he was. Uh, See, I, I, I come, I come off from from the Jones show with, with, with sad news. Yeah, why'd you do that? Yeah, I don't know. Hang on. And he he was blind the last, uh, you know, he he was blind early on in his is uh, you know of course. Was he? Yeah. Yeah, I think he was he was he was in his eighties. I he, think it was a motorcycle accident, but no, I'm not sure. No, eighty two. He was eighty two. Gordon Banks died today. Yeah, bless him. Should we play some music? Yeah. What we got? Got your new song. Yeah. I looked at the video this morning. It's pretty good. Dead End Ride. Dead End Ride. Yeah. There you I go. I was hoping that the video, you're out in the desert somewhere. Yeah. We were I know, I know, I know, Jonesy. What What am I going to say? Where's the bike? No. Oh. No. I was hoping that, that the, the very last bit was going to be someone on top of that mountain. Yeah. You know, but you, you obviously used um, what they call them bleeding things. Yeah. Zzz. Yeah. What do they call them? Oh, drones. 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 Yeah. I was hoping one was going to zoom down on top of that and you were going to be on there. Yeah, but Bon Jovi already that did that in Blazing Saddles. 
<laughs> oh, blazing, blazing, glo- blazing glory. But then, I, I mean, that's got to cost a lot of money. Unless you're, unless you're an avid uh, rock climber, that's going to cost a lot of dough yeah. to put an helicopter. You could also, D- David Lee Roth also had a video where he starts hanging over the cliff. So what would have been really cool if, if, if you ended up in that shot, then you would say, you know, these days... These days, you use stock footage because, you know, in the old days when we used $250,000 on a video, today, you know, today you have a friend that's good at using iMovie, and then you you, you go into a studio, (laughs) and then you play the song, and things like that. But the most important thing for me was that I wanted to go back to music and not have anything distract the song, because this song, even though this is my 11th solo album, will represent all other 10 uh, solo albums. This is classic Mike Tramp solo in every which way. Okay. Jones's Jukebox, KLOS. What's it called again? Dead End Ride. Dead End Ride. Take it away. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on Carol OS. That was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Anything that's rock and roll. And then we had Mike Tramp, Dead End Ride. Is that what you're calling yourself? Just your name? Yeah, yeah. And uh, that was from a new album. But every poster will say the voice of White Lion. Yeah, yeah. Of course. And I, it, I, I have a blank st- You <laughs> can't blame them. They just want to no. try and get yeah. people in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's from a new album, Stray from the Flock. Yes. And that's out March 1st. It is. You're playing this Thursday, February 14th. You know what day that is, right? Yeah. What? Valentine's Day. Yeah. And I have no songs about love. Okay. Only, a, only breakups. <laughs> that's that's at Whiskey. That's at the Whiskey. This, that is the Whiskey. Go, go. This Thursday. Yeah. And a US tour continues through March. And a UK tour in April. That's correct. Um, From one great country to another one. Yeah. From burritos to baked beans. So uh, who's, who's in your band now? <laughs> well, I don't really have a set band in that you don't way. Know, you're like the most unstable block. You've got nowhere to live. You got yeah. your, you pick a band up as you go to town to town. No, like no, no, Perry. no. Actually, when I, when I, when I can afford yeah. to have an, a, a, a live band with me, um, I, for Europe, I will, I will use my band in Denmark. But if I'm, I'm to tour in the U.S., I will use... Uh, Americans, my brother, my brothers over here. So, do you think? Um, so, you you you, 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 don't, you don't like the concept of manager. You, you kind of run the show all yourself. Well, the reason why I don't have a home is because of 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 misguidance. I mean, the, you you talked about before Vito and I speaking. When we call up, we always wondered where were. We wrote, we wrote the songs, and we gave them some big songs. We had some big hits, and we sold a lot of records. You had, you had the power ballad, uh, Children Cry. Had, right? Yeah, when the Children Cry were one of the, one of the like a, a, a song that will never go out of style because it's so, it means actually more today than before. But, but where were the people when we really needed? Where were the accountants? You know, our accountant at that time forgot to file the tax return in our biggest year and i remember it uh, like three weeks after my son was born and i was actually living in a guest house over in the valley uh i owned a 58 pickup truck with a cadillac engine in and you had to start it with a screwdriver basically just saying that's how low i was on cash yeah and i go out to the mailbox and there's a letter from the irs oh nice and it says you owe Nine hundred fifty thousand dollars. Wow! And I, I think I had twenty two hundred in my checking account, yeah. which I didn't have a savings. Um, and Vito got hit the same way, and that's that's really just how it all ended up. Oh, and it, suddenly we're we're there, and so so I had no money money to pay them. So basically, for the next twenty years, they put a lien on all income for my tramp yeah. in America, my royalties. Yeah. And I'd actually forgotten that I'd ever had a hit, that I'd ever made any money until one day um, a new accountant, he was just taking care of some old paperwork saying, you actually have a check coming in now, they've let you go. Wow. So 20 years to pay off yeah. $950,000. Yeah. Wow. So I've never had a manager that, that guided me well. And there aren't anybody out there. There won't be any manager that can teach me anything. Yeah. So um, it's a, it's a tough position. Well, yeah. I mean, 
if you don't mind doing it yourself. To, no, to I, me, I, it's like, oh. I, I do, but, but I am a person that, that actually um, prefer to go out and shake the stage and, and see that the stage um, is made well. I'm, I'm, I, you know what? I'm the opposite of what the Sunset Rockers were, and that's just because the way I was raised. Yeah. I got up like 6 o'clock in the morning, and when we were, for example, were touring with ACDC, and went out there with the crew and the riggers, I wanted to see how that was built. Yeah. I wanted to see how the sound system worked. That's why I know everything about all this technology today. So, so you know... I feel good about having that knowledge that that I wasn't just sitting in a hotel room asking for you know like room service. Yeah. I was out there being very physical. Yeah. Uh, it's just the way it is. I I wasn't really made. I wasn't really made for what I became. Yeah. But once I became it, I I I, be, I became better at it. Mm. Okay, that's Mike Tramp. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox. We're going to visit the Duke when we come back. We might do a bit of jamming. Yeah. 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 Okay. Rock and roll. See you in a minute. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That was the Kinks. It sure was. Sunny afternoon. And then before that was Roxy Music, Prairie Rose from an album, Country Life. We're here with Mike Tramp <laughs> of White Life. He hates that. Always no, no. It's a tramp. It's like a lot of people never. When I pronounce tramp, they they never really hear it all the way, so they always write Trump. Yeah. I says nah. There's, not an, really. there's an A in it though. I mean, it's obvious. Yeah, there it's is tramp. an I, but not everybody pronounces the A the correct way. There's a lot. There's a lot of tramps. Yeah. Literally. And and the the guy at the at the rental car, he goes, "Hey, tramp. Hey, I didn't mean that." He says, "I says it's, yeah, yeah. it's okay, man." It, it, let me ask you something. Is that like a Denmark name? No, it's not. My it's, my birth name was Trampenau, but since the beginning, I was um, I was I was called Tramp in the streets. So Trampenau is a is a yeah. Denmark name? No, it's not. I I don't. I, my, my father didn't have a father. We don't really know where the name comes from. You're all a b bunch of gypsies. I could lot. be Native American. I don't know. You don't look Native American. No. You're quite handsome. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. But but it's it's interesting enough when you talk about this because on the three past tours my T-shirt that just said Tramp, yeah, and then some of the girls write and says, could you could you make a T-shirt that also said Mike Tramp, you know? Because when I walk down in the supermarket with this T-shirt, they look at me they think I'm and a things tramp. like that. So instead yeah. now I've just put it on the back side, just above uh, you know the butt, and it says you've been stamped by the Tramp. Nice. Yeah, I thought it was a nice touch. <laughs> you should get a tattoo on the back. The you want it? You want it? Do you remember the? Do you remember the tramp stamps? I'm I'm sure a lot of ladies are embarrassed. Yeah, no, I, that's that's my 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 favorite place to sign, and they just line up. Yeah. And then somebody takes a picture and puts it on the social media, and then it looks like I shouldn't be staying there doing this. Yeah. But what can I do? They're just making you. They're do asking it. for an autograph. You're I just... prefer to sign it on a vinyl, like an LP. Yeah. But they rather have it on their. Yeah, on their back. Yeah, somewhere. Back. Yeah. They want to be stamped. Okay. Yeah, that's the way it is. We're going to get stamped by the tramp right now, right? We're yeah. going to do a little jamming. Yeah, just yeah. What 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 is this? We're just doing this for a giggle. You don't do this in the set. Sometimes I do it for 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 a last encore, just coming out and do do a little bit of tribute to two of my my uh, my faux he heroes. You know, I grew up on on Dylan and Neil Young in, yeah. in Denmark, along with some 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 other folk heroes from the late '60s and '70s. And it's just, it's like easy guitar learning, and and yeah. you know you can just get away with it. We're not doing a Hotel California or something complicated yeah. Yeah, good. that actually requires singing. Yeah, and it requires guitar playing, which exactly I'd rather do. This. I love to be in that, but you know. You, if you go into the guitar center or any guitar shops around the world, you'll never hear anybody sit. They always are noodling away this and stuff what, like this that. This is what you hear in the guitar center. <laughs> Exactly, and th that maybe goes on for 10 seconds in the song and for the other three, 
40 minutes or they're singing and strumming. Can you I, imagine working in the guitar center? You have to hear that. That's why that. every time I go up, they treat me like like I'm one of them. I say, no, listen, I actually have a pro account with Widerman. <laughs> no, that's the is old days. Is he still there, Widerman? He's no, he's not. But the thing is, I learned from my music teacher, who really never teach, taught me music, that four or five acoustic chords, and then I could entertain all the kids going to summer camp. Didn't matter if the guitar really, really, you know, went tuned. But as long as they could sing along, you had the thing, and nobody was waiting for a drum fill or a guitar riff. They just wanted to sing along, and. All my songs and, and, and my foundation comes from just sitting there and strumming, yeah. and I never wanted to be anything more than that. Okay. I already were good looking, so I, I knew I could get away with just being a very plain and simple guitar You're in player. good shape, too. Yeah, and good. And then, yeah. And then. I used to like looking at your legs when we played soccer. <laughs> you never played me, man. I always ran out there and said, hey, man, play me. <laughs> I didn't play you. I always wondered why. I thought I was always open. You were always playing. What are you talking about? And then when Ian Asprey got the ball, he also would just take it all the way himself. I think we really were dying for some other... Attention. <laughs> yeah, that's Everyone's some... dying for attention. So, somehow. Actors so... and musicians. What do you think they're doing out there? I don't know. <laughs> Billy Duffy. You know? Okay, let's uh, let's let's do this. Do you want a bit of reverb? Uh, that's fine. Yeah, I don't yeah. necessarily need it, but you could do it, yeah. Yeah. It's not going to make me play better. I know. Okay. As long as you put the reverb on the on the vocal, not the guitar. <laughs> yeah. Jonesy's jukebox, Carlo S with my guest Mike Tramp. We're gonna do a little jamming of yeah. some covers. Whenever you're ready. Colors in the streets. Red, white, and blue People shuffle in their feet People sleeping in their shoes There's a warning sign on the road ahead There's a lot of people saying We'll be better off dead Don't feel like Satan But I am to them So I try to forget it in a way that I can Keep on rocking in the free world 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 Some kind of way out of here 
said the joker to the thief There is too much confusion I can't get no relief Businessmen, they drink my wine Plowmen take my earth No one will live on their mind Nobody offer his word Yeah, yeah But a joke Oh, but you and I We've been through this And this is not our fate So let us start talking Forcing now Cause the hour's getting late servants too outside in the cold cold distance a wild cat did growl two riders were approaching and then the wind began to howl it howled all along the watchtower You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox. KLOS, that was the Stooges, Give Me Danger. And before that was a, a jam by Mike Tramp. It was going to the summer camp with Jonesy, it was, that song was called. Yeah. And a little bit of Dylan and Neil Young thrown in there too. It was good. I love it. Don't you think it's funny that accents go out the window when you start singing? Everyone. Yeah. All, everyone all of a sudden sounds American. <laughs> it's weird, it is, right? Yeah. And stuttering too. And stuttering? Stuttering too. You stutter what when you sing? No, stutter. Stutter? Yeah, no, no, no. It's, uh, the, yeah, that kind of stuff. When you're singing? No, no, no. There are people. Oh, who stutter? That they're when stutter, they sing, yeah. they don't yeah, stutter. Yeah, no, it, yeah. it's like yeah. so. So people ba basically just go around singing instead of, you know, <laughs> explaining yeah. it. It's just one of those things. It's also, it also takes you away from a lot of your own uh, personal problems. You forget about all the. Uh, the arguments with your wife back home the second you start singing a song and yeah, but everything why goes away. Does everyone sound American? That's my point. Yeah. Yeah. I can never figure that now, out. Now now not everyone, not every singer. I couldn't have this conversation with anyone but you because you know back there were a band back in the seventies because I was I was living in Copenhagen, Denmark and, and, and basically listening to British uh rock and roll pop coming out. There was a band called Mr. Big there. Oh yeah. The only okay that I actually played Big creation See, the other I day. could only have this conversation with Jonesy because you would be the the, the singer's name and guitar player's name was Dickens. Yeah, yeah. He had it, it he would, had a good would that voice. be a Cockney accent? Ryan Star am I what kind of accent would that be called? It was a little bit. We're gonna we'll play that song, uh, Wonderful Creation. Except oh what a beautiful song. But I started on my next album trying to imitate him, so instead of singing Rain, I sang Ryan. Yeah. It was, you know, it malfunctioned, but I was, I, <laughs> his accent was so distinct and so, I'd never heard anything like it. I, I quickly got away from it. Well, I'll tell you who else didn't sound American when he sung. It was Johnny Rotten, <laughs> but also, but also uh, Steve Harley. Yeah. He didn't sound American when he sang. There's a, uh, Ian Drury. 
But a lot of a lot of bands when yeah. they sing, they all sure. make. Stones is a classic. Yeah, of course. You know. they're, 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 everyone. What about Nardy Holder? Yeah, that's, I guess so. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's just one of those things. Marriott, Steve Marriott, sound American. Yeah, yeah. You know, you grow up with a lot of American music. I think that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, I'm figuring it out right now. As yeah, we you're talk. figuring it out. I, I, I just remember first time coming there with White Lion, and we're we are we're in Glasgow, and we're at a radio station, and and the DJ starts asking questions, and 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 the three other guys just sit there. What did you just ask us? He simply could not understand the Scottish accent. Yeah. Simply couldn't. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Siri Billy Connolly, when he goes full blow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got to go, well, he might know, you know. Yeah. But it's it's one of those things that, that sometimes as a songwriter, um, you want to use or English slang because it just feels right at that moment, and then in another song you're using more, you know, American terminology or, or certain things or saying stuff like that. Yeah. And 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 um, I I gotten caught <laughs> caught in that a few times, and then you get to Germany, and then they try to correct you that you actually have written something that to them doesn't sound right because you sort of use the English way. I had a song called "Wait Not for Me." But where, you know, because it fitted better in the lyric than Don't Wait For Me. And if you sing it in German. No, <laughs> no, not so, no, I just, no, but then he says, uh, why are you singing Wait Not For Me? You can't sing that. It should be Don't Wait For Me. And but, that just You can't really, please everyone. No. Especially Look what they the, did to Jesus. They hung yeah, him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to visit the two when we come back with Mike Tramp. And uh, we're having a good time. Yeah. We're having a minute. great time. You've been listening to Jonesy's Jukebox. I've been enjoying Jonesy's Jukebox. Speak English, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I've been enjoying Jonesy's Jukebox. Oh, he's a cockney now. Yeah, mate. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of... Austra- <laughs> what are you? <laughs> you know, I have a dri- uh, Australian driver's license. Um, when I went to Australia, he got, he got converted over. So, do you, do, you one, have, do, you, do you have a picture? On, do do they have pictures on their licenses? Yeah, okay, yeah, you know, on. stuff like that. So once in a while, when I'm when I'm when I'm out on the uh, the open American highway, and do nothing wrong, for some reason I get pulled over. Yeah. So when they pick up the uh, the driver's license, and yeah. here you got this Danish kid, you know, in America on yeah. an Australian ride. I go, get I might as a gown. When they ask, I have to like carry on with the Australian accent, not to like trick him or something. Yeah, that's not <laughs> suspicious. He's not going to find that accent out at all. No. Yeah, I put another shrimp in a bag before you. Yeah, that, yeah, that's he that's goes, fooling him. Just keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh man, Mr. Mike Tramp. Yeah, I'm going to do it. What white lion. <laughs> Fun seeing you, buddy. Formerly, it has been a blast. But before you go. Yeah, I thought you've just rebuilt my career here, and I, I'm grateful, grateful. Well, let's hope some punters show up at the whiskey this Thursday. Yeah, Valentine's Day at yeah. Whiskey a Go Go. Yeah, and then the U.S. tour continues through March, and then the U.K. tour in April. Yeah, and then back in Denmark and, and the rest of uh, the European continent. You got an album coming out. Stray from the Flock out March 1st yeah. and the single is Dead End Ride which we played I couldn't have said it better so let's uh, let's hope some punters show up at Valentine probably not Valentine's Day no one's going to go to a rock yeah, concert and, are they? listen I'm optimistic you're going to be giving some stuff away I heard <laughs> <laughs> but you know you're going to sign some back. I, I take everything with a smile it's it's as simple as that you yeah. know it, it, it's one of those things that when I started this kind of touring you know you know the, you know, the old stories about you know the contracts of the Van Halen demanding the Brown and M&Ms being taken away and all that stuff my writer my technical writer and backstage writer just basically says just a pen surprise me a Sharpie. To surprise me. No, I bring the own Sharpie with me. <laughs> I ask for nothing. Um, so listen, your, your, your first... You're getting at something here. Your first look at stardom was when you did Eurovision Song Contest. You had a track called Boom Boom. I watched it on YouTube this morning. Damn that YouTube. And then there's, Damn that. And then there's a, like, 1978. an orchestra. And you all look like two, two of you. You all look like Rod Stewart haircuts. Kind of basically rollers, yeah. All in white, yeah. 
That was that time. What do you think of that? You're embarrassed by that? Without that, I wouldn't be here today because it kind of became something I ran away for. And, and, and every time I wanted to quit rock and roll, I just th thought about where I came from. I says, I'm never going back there. Yeah. And, and today I've actually managed to turn that whole thing around yeah. that even 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 back only in Denmark, of course, when I do like a two hour like serious show and I'm up there, you know, deep in the songs about like opening my heart yeah. and talking about my father dying and stuff like that. I finished the set boom, boom. with this song and, and this this club owner came up to me and says, I don't believe this man for two hours. You're pouring your heart out, performing at a top level. And the second you play that song, the room goes nuts. Like they like it. Yeah, it's, it's just one yeah, of yeah. you know, it's just one of those things. You are where you are. It was never part of the plan. You should embrace you should everything, not hide from stuff. Exactly. Because then that's but a... I, I hit for 30 years and I realized I couldn't run away from it. So I decided to go back and pick it up and carry it in my backpack yeah. and, and use it. And, you know, there's a lot of people that want, especially today with you, you the 15 minutes of fame, when you have something, you know, even, even when I get back to the country and, and they, they look at my passport, they say, welcome back, Mr. Boom Boom. Yeah. Did There's you... only one in that country that is Mr. Boom Boom. Yeah. That's me. That should be your stage name. Forget Mike Tramp, Mr. Boom Boom. Yeah. Now listen, <laughs> did yeah. you win? Did, did, did that song win? No, the ever... thing is, we won the Danish one. Yeah. And and then we, we got thrown into, you know... Cliff Richard. Yeah, it, it, that time. The pro, the difference is, and because you, you, I have to throw this in, today you can sing in English when you represent your country. Back, Back then, then. We, we had to sing in Danish. Yeah. Oh, that's not that's an a tough easily one to sound digestive sexy. language. Not at all. Yeah. You know, I mean, today you have Eurovision Song Contest. Tony Iommi wrote the, the song from the, the Croatia delegation. It, it's it's nothing. It, it has nothing to do. Back then, you represent. It's almost like, well, this is a national Danish dish, and then they come from from you know Pakistan as well. Here's our national dish, yeah. and then it's just ah, uh, you know. Is a McDonald's exactly. So what did um, everybody did, loves a hamburger? They'll always win. I'll never eat a McDonald's. Though. No, no, I'm, I'm just talking about basically. I'm, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I. <laughs> yeah, David Lee off joke. Um, I wasn't that quick. Um, how old was you? You look like you're like 16 in that in that video. The boom, yeah, boom. I was I was 16. 16. And a half. But the, the the interesting story is you mentioned Basie the Rollers. I worked for this guy who ran all teen magazines in Denmark. Yeah. One single person sat there and I would after school come there and open the envelopes from all the teenage girls writing into Donny Osmond yeah. and the Bay the Roller saying, If 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 I was to meet you alone in your hotel rooms, this is what I would do. So that actually became my sexual education, sitting and reading these letters from all these young girls. And then he started looking at me and says molding me into I was going to one day be in a band and then he says tonight we're going to go see the Bay City Rollers yeah. but you have to dress different yeah so he got all these the cool like the all the, all that English glam look there was one store and he Tom. got the, the platforms <laughs> the, the platform boots yeah. gold American you know like a satin jacket yeah, like yeah. cool boots but I couldn't walk through my neighborhood in that because I came from a really tough neighborhood he was embarrassed, so I yeah. train I changed at the uh, on the train station toilet because the concert arena was <laughs> on the other side and I walk into this this concert arena and I'm the only guy yeah who's dressed like that but also the only guy in the audience there were like 1899 yeah. bay city rollers fans screaming yeah and up there on stage is a support band that's getting lynched and next day it said in the national newspaper bay city rollers manager tam payden steals mabel's lead singer so I became the new lead singer ah, in that band, okay. all because of going to a Basie Rollers okay. concert. And the but, rest is history. Yeah. And don't ever go back on YouTube and search for this. Yeah, don't go back on YouTube and search for this song called Boom Boom, Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> do not do it. Mike do Tram, not. everybody. Thanks for coming in, buddy. It has been a pleasure. Tomo Thank you so very much. It's great to see you. Tomorrow we got the makers of the film United Skates. Gary Moore's up next, and we'll see you tomorrow. See you later.